Uh, let's see now. Uh, now, I'll tell you, I, I was going to say a little more about my uh, nonprofit, but really the best way is to, to illustrate for a story. In uh, 2016, I was chosen by an organization called the Social Venture Partners. It's a big nonprofit with chapters in a bunch of cities, maybe they're near you as well. Their main mission is to serve other nonprofits by coaching them on how to make their case uh, for funding. So their main event each year is an event called the Fast Pitch, which is a little bit like that TV show Shark Tank. The idea being that you start with a large group of nonprofits and, with, and they work with coaches to tune their pitch and they take turns pitching to donors and they, and they weed down the pool. They started with over a hundred uh, at the beginning of the season and the, the main event was the top ten performers in, up in front of about 800 philanthropists in a large venue and you've got a short amount of time to convince them to, to donate a ton of money. Uh, now, I got in some trouble at this event, although I actually did make the finals and eventually made the top three. But there were a few judges that really didn't like what I was doing because since my nonprofit is based on the idea that we remember better what we hear through a song than what we hear through speech, I decided instead of doing the usual format of talking to people that I would sing my presentation. And some of the people loved it, some of them hated it. So I'll, I'll sing you the song I wrote, just a little song, a little more information about, um, about Griffinette. So, it's without the guitar. When I became a teacher back in 1993, I saw the same problem others have observed. Teaching elementary math and science in LAUSD, I found a gap between the rich kids and the students that I served. Now when I was young, we had Schoolhouse Rock on Saturday TV. I played guitar, so I wondered how hard could it be. I started writing songs about the subjects of the STEM, and my fellow teachers found that it was working great for them. I started getting feedback from the teachers every day. This belongs in every school, is what they said. But I knew the schools that needed it most could not afford to pay. So I started a new nonprofit, and I called it Griffin Ed. We feature songs of science and, of course, the Common Core, so we can help the kids of nearly every state from shore to shore. It's fun and it's effective, how much better could it be? You know, we stream it on our website and we do it all for free. We've already done four albums and we're making more of those with a growing team of musicians and writers, too. Now we're looking for support for animated videos. If you'd like to be a sponsor, then I'd like a word with you. It's a monumental mission, but so far we're doing fine. We can scale it up to any size, because we do it all online. If you'd like to be a donor or to learn a little more, you can check us out. We're online now at Griffinette.org. I did that one in Los Angeles in front of 800 philanthropists, and I, and I didn't win, but I made the top three. And uh, the thing was, it, we, it actually worked out really well for us, because uh, even if you don't take the prize, you, if you can get some people in the audience excited and they wind up sponsoring your work, then uh, it's all good. And that did happen. We raised a lot of money. And uh, the one judge came up to me afterwards, just you know, with a really sour look on his face. He said, I want you to know. And, and are there any children in this audience? I can't see from with all the lights on. No kids? Okay, fine. I, I'll, I can tell you what he said then. Uh, he came up and said, "You dumb fuck. You know what? What do you, what do you think? You're coming into a venue like this, you know, and, and doing that. You, you're disrespectful. It's unprofessional. I thought it was awful." And I, I said, "Well, I'm sorry, but that, this is how my organization works." He said, "Well, I'll tell you something. I talked to my wife." And I said, well, what did you think about all the performers you know, tonight? And she said, well, what about that guy, Tim Griffin, the one who's teaching math and science through music and doing it mostly online? What a jackass. And I said, well, wait a minute. Of all the presentations that you and your wife sat through tonight, she remembered my name, my <laughs> mission, what I do. And she said, yeah, but if she hates you, I said, yeah, I, I, I hear you, and, and I've certainly been called worse names, but I'll tell you something, sir. Tonight, you're going to be brushing your teeth, and you're going to have my song stuck in your head. <laughs> and it's going to happen again tomorrow night, and that's when you're going to know that I'm right. So, we went our separate ways, and 
Three months later, as it happened, I was at another event for nonprofits in Los Angeles. It, there were a couple hundred people in the room. Across the crowd, all of a sudden, I make eye contact with the same guy. <laughs> and he saw me, he got this really angry <laughs> He starts pushing people around the door. He comes up, I'm like, uh oh, uh oh, oh, wait, where's the door? Where's the door? And he comes up to me, gets in my face, and he says, You son of a bitch. <laughs> and then he reached into his pocket and pulled out his checkbook. <laughs> so it worked out okay. Yeah.